this is Scott Stewart and today I want to take a look at the subject of Unix file permissions. Now this is a topic that invariably I get a lot of questions about especially as we proceed into weeks three and four where we're creating scripts, creating files, editing those files and so forth. Um, usually there'll be a handful of students, maybe more in the class, who will see messages on their system when they try to create a file and it says you can't create this file or you can't execute this script and the majority of the time it turns out to be an issue with Unix permissions. So I want to take a look at this. It's a little bit uh, difficult to understand at first but I think once you've seen the pattern it'll be more clear to you. Now as far as this long string of characters here, whenever you execute a list schema, that is the ls command, and as we've seen in the readings, that is equivalent to the dir command in DOS. It lists the, the contents of a directory. But uh, whenever we run this command with a dash l parameter, which gives us a long listing, we get information about the file such as the file size, file dates, file ownerships, and also file permissions. One of the things you're going to see in the far left-hand column is this long string of characters. Now these characters are going to differ depending on which permissions that you have assigned. But uh, it's pretty easy to understand actually once you start, uh, start working with it quite a bit. The first position could maybe be represented by a D or a dash or possibly some other character. Uh, such as a C or a B, but typically you're going to see a dash or a D here. This first position indicates whether this file is a directory or a special file or just a plain file. If I have a D in this position, it means that the file that I'm seeing in the directory list is actually another subdirectory. So I could actually execute a CD space and then whatever the name of this file is and it would change, take me down to another directory level. More often than not, though, you're going to see this instead of as a D, you're going to see it as a dash in this first position. And that merely means that this file is just a regular file. Um, it's not a directory, it's not a special file, it's just a regular file. It might be an executable, uh, it might be a script, it may be a data file. But uh, that dash in that position uh, is something that will tell you that you're dealing with a regular file. Now the next group of characters you see are the actual permissions assigned to the file. And these are actually broken up into three different groups. If you notice, you've got nine characters in total with a repeating pattern of R, W, and X. Now what you may see is R, W, X in the first three positions, possibly just an R blank X in the next three positions. And in the next position, you may not see anything at all. And there again, it just really depends on what permissions are assigned to the file. But each of these groups, I'm going to go ahead and write this back for the moment. Well, each of these groups of permissions identify a different group of users. The first three positions are the permissions that the owner of the file has. And the owner of the file, if you go further across the line and you're looking at the directory listing, you'll typically see a couple of names or things that look like names. Uh, one may be, and then for this example I've got T. Smith. So I'm assuming that the owner of this file is, is a gentleman by the name of Tom Smith. And then I have a space and a, file, uh, a name here called ACCT. What this means is that this file is owned by a user named T. Smith and it is also owned by the group known as ACCT. This might be an accounting group, so all of the folks in the accounting group would actually have ownership of this file as well. Now, what happens in the first three positions here, these are the permissions that belong to T. Smith. So, I have an R, a W, and an X, and what that stands for the R means read permissions. It means that I can actually look at the contents of the file. The W means write permissions. It means I can alter the contents of the file. And the X is a permission that's probably going to be new to you. It's the execute permission. Now one of the things that's different about Unix as opposed to DOS and Windows, uh, if you work with DOS and Windows a lot, 
you're probably used to seeing files that end in a .exe or maybe a .bat or a .com. And those are files that Windows and DOS recognize as being programs or executables, or sometimes you may hear them called binaries. Because those particular extensions, exe, com, bat, tell the operator, the operating system knows that these particular files or should be a program I can run, as opposed to if it had an extension, uh, say DOC, where Windows would know that, that is a word processing document. Unix doesn't use the concept of file extensions. You can have file extensions if you want to, but Unix really doesn't care if you've got a file extension or not. So the question becomes, how does it know if it's an executable program? The way it does is through this X permission. The execute permission. If that permission is granted to a file, Unix will assume that that file is executable. Now, of course the question is, what happens if you put an executable permission on, say, a data file? Well, Unix will attempt to run it, and then it will toss up a lot of errors as soon as it realizes that uh, that file is not something that it can process. But you can freely grant any of these permissions, and we'll see how we do that in a moment. Uh, to any file so long as you're the owner. These first three permissions are the owner's permissions. The next three permissions, rewrite and execute once again, belong to the group. And the group that owns this file happens to be ACCT, and, and like I said, we'll use that as a representative representation for the accounting group. This is going to vary. Don't just assume that you're going to have an ACCT group because that's just something I made up. But these next three permissions refer to the permissions that the accounting group or the group ownership has. Now, these may differ and probably will differ from the permissions of the owner of the file, the T. Smith uh, account. Good example. <clears throat> Let's assume that uh, T. Smith is actually the system administrator. So this person has, should have the ability to read, write, and execute this file, whatever the file name happens to be. Any user of the system also is a member of the accounting group, but so they should have read and execute permissions. In other words, they should be able to read this file and they should be able to execute it if it's a program. But as a regular user, they should not be able to write or modify this file. So what you'll see in a lot of cases is the owner of the file having full permissions, the group having partial permissions, enough to be able to do their work, and then you come to the last three permissions. And these are known as world permissions. This means that anyone who is not the owner and anyone who is not a member of the group, these are the permissions that they would have. And what you might see in that case, you may see no permissions, just three blanks. That would mean that the T. Smith account has full rights to the file, the accounting group has read and execute permissions, but then anybody who is not T. Smith or not a part of the accounting group has no permissions whatsoever. So they can't view the file, they can't execute the file, they can't obviously modify the file. And you can see all sorts of combinations. Sometimes you may see a situation where only the owner has permissions. So you'd see read, write, execute, and nothing for anyone else. Nothing for the group, nothing for the world. In other cases, it may be totally fine for the world to have permissions to this file, at least temp uh, limited permissions. And you may see read, write, and execute for the owner, read and execute for the group, and read and execute for world. Now you have to be careful with the world permissions. And the reason for that is because anyone who can sign on to your system is effectively world. So if you grant any permissions in the world columns, the last three columns of the permissions uh, section, then you're going to end up with folks who can view those files or modify those files or possibly execute depending on what permissions you've granted.